everybody. This is Mike Sandoval with Muse TV, and we're back again with the director, Khalil Sullins and Amber Marie Bellinger, oh, sorry, Bollinger, I got close, <laughs> <laughs> about their new film that's coming out, Listening. Please tell me, Khalil, what was it about this film and a little bit about the background story about it? Uh, yeah, the original idea for the film was kind of like, what if someone invented telepathy, you know, and uh, could I like have fun with this superpower of always like, you know, wanting to be able to, not that I'd want to be able to read people's thoughts, but you know, I, like I grew up reading comic books and stuff like that. And like, you have like Professor X or whatever with these superpowers, but then could you base that in reality in the world today? And like, how could this happen through like science and hard sci-fi and start doing research and found it's very possible, you know, it's becoming very real. And uh, then kind of wanted to explore all the implications, you know, for uh, what it means in society, what it means, you know, in the world around us, but then also what it means in our personal relationships and exploring it through these characters and how uh, it would affect, you know, your personal life if you had your friend or your spouse plugging into your brain and experiencing your thoughts, you know. Yeah, exactly. And Amber, sorry, for butchering your last name it's been a hard week when it comes to names <laughs> but I wanted to ask you uh when you got the script what was it about it that you had to be a part of it because it's a very interesting story and it was interesting to me yeah it's very interesting and it's not every day that uh an actress gets a, a good story um <laughs> that is has a rich character in there that um you can really dive into and play like I you know when I first read the script first of all I love sci-fi I love sci-fi movies and I um and it's those scripts are really hard to come by especially something that's so well done um and so well written so I felt like I had some sort of responsibility even in the audition like before I was auditioning reading it I felt like I had the responsibility to be as I mean our responsibility anyway is to be as honest as possible, but because I liked the, the, the story so much, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't mess this up <laughs> for myself, but also like, this is, a, this is just too good to be true, so. Yeah. And for both of you, this is a very, it's a thriller, <laughs> definitely, but it also takes you and it makes you think during this whole movie because we're seeing a lot of this technology starting to come up about neural networks, using the neural network in order to figure things out and computer learning into this. How much of this was based on a reality into a fictional reality? And what are your thoughts about this? Because we're seeing this a lot now in technology and especially in the tech space. Yeah, I mean, when I was writing the script, um... I wrote script years ago and at the time, you know, Neuralink, you know, and stuff, the companies that are doing this now weren't around, but I sort of did research into brain computer interfaces and then into nanotechnology, you know, and found that people at the time had invented uh, these uh, nanotube electrodes that could be injected into the body and be powered by ATP, like through our own cellular energy. And so I was like, okay, could I combine these two technologies? Would it make sense, you know, to like inject these things into the brain and be able to track, you know, billions of neurons and uh, effectively experience each other's thoughts? Uh, it was theoretical at the time, you know, but I was like, okay, like movie logic, it makes sense and it's not disproven. And it's been a bit surreal since making the movie and having it come out to see like, okay, this is like actually happening, you know, at the time when, you know, we're on festival circuit, they were doing it with mice and having it look just like the movie, you know, like two little mice with computer chips in their brains and connected by a wire and they would run through a maze. And when their brains were connected, they would get through the mazes faster, you know, and now we're doing it with other animals and even with humans and, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy how fast uh, this stuff's becoming real. And Amber, what are your thoughts on everything about what's going on, especially being in the role and being portraying, living in it, in that space? Um, what do I think about the story and how it, it pertains to life now in, in reality? Um, I mean, even when, the, when I read the script, I was like, oh, this is 
sci-fi <laughs> but this is totally real shit <laughs> um and it can be scary you know i mean there's some positives and there's some negatives to all of this stuff um so it's just like how do you know oftentimes i don't think we have a choice to be in this experiment but um it is uh, you know it can help a lot of people um but in whose hands can it help the most people and in whose hands will it hurt people mm -hmm. so it's the constant i'm constantly battling like is this good is this bad is this good but there's i mean there is room for both because this is the world that we live in but it's very interesting to see all of this come out as real yeah. i mean it's happening it's happening folks <laughs> <laughs> well it, it's so funny how like We've seen it so many times before that science fiction actually becomes science fact. Oh yeah. And he basically and, and, read his script and was like, you know what, we this is actually a really good idea. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, like I say, Khalil, like, was there a force? Like, did you ever take a step back while writing the script and ever say like a force sight to this ever happening and this actually being something that would because uh, it's been a few years since you wrote the script and you, you uh, made the film, correct? Yeah, I mean, at the time I was thinking of, you know, playing with mind reading and stuff as a metaphor for social media and our phones and the, how technology like is supposed to help the way we communicate with each other. In a lot of ways it does, but in other ways it can be an impediment and gets in the way of communication we learn how to have like normal human relationships how to like you know the movie's called listening for a reason you know because it's what they call it when you plug into someone's brain you, they call it listening but it's also we need to remember how to listen to our friend when they want to talk how to listen to your spouse your coworker, and have you know real human relationships and uh yeah so I sort of knew and as far as where I took the story I kind of echoed what we see with social media and the internet and everything else, you know, with government surveillance and corporations trying to uh, manipulate our thoughts and buying habits and uh, everything else. Uh, so yeah, and now with, yeah, I think whatever the next stage of technology will be, these same sort of things will happen, you know, unless we become more aware as a society and uh, use technology in the right way. Yeah. And Amber, I, I would love to ask you this one and love to see what you, your thoughts are, because with social media and what we've seen so far and what the film really pertains to, the, the, the good part about it is maybe this is a way for people to start listening again, because sometimes it feels like communication and the way communication has broken down with the use of social media, people are not really paying attention to one another as much as they used to. Yeah, you know, and I've seen, especially during this pandemic, you know, people are craving connection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe we were starved before this. And, you know, this, and I think at times we are starved for, con for connection. Um, so this pandemic using this technology to connect to each other and really try to listen to each other. It's been really interesting to see people try to reach through <laughs> the camera in their computer or their phone to like, hey, it, it, to, to really listen to each other. Um, I mean, don't you feel that? Like yeah. now the pandemic, it's, it's kind of, it can be really beautiful. <laughs> I mean, there is the side that I, I'm trying to focus on the positive of what happened during the pandemic. And I do see a lot of people really trying to connect and successfully doing that in ways that they didn't before the pandemic so right and I agree with you on that because it's like it's been tough to do zoom interviews and not have that personal I'm such a I feed off of people's reactions and it makes it easier to ask questions and think that way so that's why like when we're doing in the technology technological space it's kind of different it's kind of weird and you lose that personal personal touch and I think that's what I love about this film most of all to me because it shows the good and what could actually, the positives, but it really does show the bad and what could do and how things can turn. And I think a lot of films don't always touch in those angles, the way Khalil, you do it. And I think that's what makes this film really, really excellent. Well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's hopefully a movie that like sparks conversation. And, you know, this is, 
you know, this is the world we live in technology and social media, you know, zoom, all this stuff. It's, they're all good things, you know, and we need to like, uh, learn how to progress and use them the right way. And it's really like just holding up a mirror to society, you know, and, uh, and to us, you know, like a lot of, if we dig deeper into these issues, it's kind of like, you know, our thoughts are our reality, you know, and like, okay, how are we like, uh, living our lives, you know, like, do we have good intentions behind the actions we're making and stuff? And then that really digs into like, okay, are you thinking about the right things even, you know, and if you live in a world where you're plugging into, you know, your coworker's brain, your friend's brain, your spouse's brain, uh, yeah, thoughts are reality, little fleeting things that you shouldn't be thinking about, you know, like become very real to someone else. And uh, yeah, we see that online, you know, someone tweets something they shouldn't or whatever, not realizing the whole world is listening or whatever, you know, or, or uh, all sorts of things we see caught on video now that go viral and sort of show the ugly side of society, you know, it's good, but we need to like know all these things and uh, not have it swept under the rug and technology helps with that. Yeah. And are we looking at post, are you looking at maybe revisiting and making us a, 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 something that relates to this film, something, a sequel type of, because I could see a lot of things you could do with this film when yeah, it comes maybe, to sequel. Maybe one day, you never know. Yeah, I've got a couple other projects I'm working on right now, but uh, yeah, who knows? If well. there is a sequel, I'm going to Cambodia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's that's my role. I don't know what I'll do, <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be a lot of fun while you're there. <laughs> it'll be really great, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So to tie everything up, um, how can people watch the film? How can they watch you, Amber, and watch your film, Khalil? Um, what platforms yeah, it's, are you on? It, yeah, it's going to be on all uh, streaming and VOD platforms. You know, uh, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you watch movies. Yeah, you can find listening. Oh, well, we're going to put a link underneath uh, so after you can find it uh, since we are an Amazon affiliate so after you can get the get the look and be able to people could download and watch this film because I think it's a very good film for what we're going through right now. Um, before we leave, Amber, what are you working on next? Uh, I am in a band, so we're working on a new album. <laughs> <laughs> I need new music. I need I'm missing going to a live show. I, oh, that I, really I know don't. I know talk about connection you mm -hmm. know you don't have to get you can't go to live shows like how do you connect with people but we've been able to figure out a way but that's what I'm that's what I'm working on right now awesome and Khalil what's your next film what's your next project what can we look forward to uh yeah I'm working on a couple things I've got a comic book I'm working on that's a serial killer story that plays with uh race issues in the south and uh, got in our script I'm working on, the, another sci-fi that kind of uh, plays with uh, the way we experience time, I guess. Uh, that's how I would say it. Oh, great. And I love this film. I think it has a lot of what's going on. Like, I can't mention that enough. I, th I think people need to watch this to kind of like get an idea. If they don't know yet, it's going to really hit them. And I think this is going to be a really popular film. Thank you so much for stopping with us. I really appreciate it. And don't forget, we'll have the link on the bottoms so after you could uh, watch the film yourself. I'm Mike Sandoval, and we'll see you next time on Muse TV.